Before we begin, or I guess rather as we begin, don't try this at home. Don't try this at work. Don't try this anywhere under any circumstance. This is not safe, but, and I'm not demonstrating this whole thing to you as a how-to. This is just how I did it. I'm trying, or I am actually now, removing the trailer hitch, receiver hitch, off of my rusty 2003 uh, excursion power stroke. It's important to know this is a power stroke because that means it's a diesel vehicle, not a gasoline vehicle. Gasoline is extremely easy to ignite with a spark. Diesel fuel is a bit more difficult to ignite. What I am doing here, that is not an original bolt, as is evident by all this nasty weld on here. This is one of the most difficult metals I've I've had to weld to. I'm not a professional welder, but my welds typically turn out a lot nicer than that. This this material was just extremely difficult to get a um, a mild steel weld to take to. That's a grade eight, I believe, that I purchased at Tractor Supply. I wouldn't use anything lower than grade five, I suppose, because you might end up twisting it apart and breaking it. Give yourself the best chance of success. Get a high grade bolt forget about anything you've heard online about what the color of thread locker means it really doesn't mean anything if you don't know the manufacturer of it so this is blue thread lock and that doesn't mean a single thing because that could be a medium strength or it could be an ultra high strength depending on the brand it can be a heat required to remove or it can be a no heat required to remove so forget about the color unless you know what brand you're working with. So that's a blue thread lock, doesn't matter. That was extremely difficult to get to remove. These bolts were not very corroded despite the rest of the vehicle practically falling apart in your hands. Um, but anyway, I, I heated these things up well over 500 degrees. And mind you, this is about an inch and a half from the diesel tank, which is why I say do not try this at home. Most of these are factory with a plastic fuel tank. So again, not a safety video, not something you should try at home. But when you're removing this receiver hitch, you might notice something kind of strange about this, uh, this bolt. This is the portion of the stock. That bolt has absolutely no facets. It is a perfectly round headed bolt and does not appear that it's intended to ever be removed. It looks like these things had a, um, originally had a small stud coming out of the top of it, and then probably had a faceted head attached to that stud. And when they impacted this thing up into the vehicle, that would snap off that stud, knock the head off. And I can't think of any good reason other than actually to make it difficult for a, a vehicle owner to remove their own hitch. That's the only reason I can think of why Ford would use a perfectly round, basically a safety nut, um, on this vehicle. And I guess they might say it was to prevent theft of your of your receiver hitch. I don't know if I would buy that if they would say such a thing. But there are two of these on my vehicle. I'm not sure if it'll be the same on yours, but on my 03... Ford Excursion that appears to have a stock receiver hitch, there are two of these perfectly round-headed, and they're also pretty thin-head, um, bolts holding your receiver hitch on. You can't really get to the other end. There are, are nuts on the other end that are... Um, that are basically they're they're mounted permanent to where you can turn the bolt without having to put any kind of a wrench on the nut on the top side uh, for the most part. I did have one of my nuts break loose and that uh, that caused about an hour and a half headache trying to figure out how to weasel a ratchet in there to uh, to get a grip on the top. I did have to remove the bumper. You shouldn't have to remove the bumper if your vehicle doesn't have these stupid little things right here. 
but it'd be a good idea to spray some some knocker loose or some kind of a a good quality penetrating oil in here on top you can kind of see that bracket i was telling you about sitting um, if i get the camera to focus right there you can see that nut that's out of focus has a, uh, a metal plate press fit to it that keeps it from turning while you un unscrew this thing anyway on these vehicles you can just stick your hand right through this 3 16 inch receiver hitch like it wasn't even there so i wouldn't dare put a load on this and expect that it wouldn't break off the whole back under here that's the bottom of it and the whole back across here is rusted out hard to see there is rusted out from one end all the way around to the other so most of what is holding your receiver hitch on might be gone even though you might only see a small small hole or a small bubble none of this was visible this had a little bit of rust over the top of it and you couldn't tell quite how bad it uh, really was but it's pretty bad Pretty nasty stuff. Anyway, I've removed all four of the bolts over on this side. And I just finished welding that bolt on. Again, it's a grade 8 bolt welded on to the round head of the last security bolt holding the hitch on. And it's just about to come loose and fall to the ground. And this will be two days of my life behind me. And then I'm just going to bolt the new one back up with some, some standard grade 8 bolts and washers. Put some thread lock on them. High strength heat required to remove thread lock. And hopefully I'll never have to do this again. This car is almost 20 years old at this point. I plan on driving her till she falls apart. But anyway, that's how you do this. You should not need to remove your tank um, if you can figure out how to safely remove that third bolt. You know, you could use a Sawzall. You could probably use an angle grinder and uh, cut through here. Just be really careful not to damage your car frame and be careful not to blow yourself up with the gas tank. I, I would not do this. If you have a gasoline vehicle, take the tank off get all the fumes away have this thing safe don't don't touch a spark anywhere near a gasoline tank because you don't know if the thing has a small leak that you haven't found you don't want to be on the receiving end of a fireball unless you want to get famous on the five o'clock news anyway this is what i did and now with pretty minimal leverage Oh, I should have should have done that while it was hot still. Hmm. Well, I may just heat that baby back up. A lot of guys say wait until this thing is cool to the touch, but this was spinning freely until I let it cool off. So I'm gonna heat her back up, see if I can soften that thread locker again, and get this thing pulled out. But that's how I did it. Heated it up welded it together i did use my i had to use mig and tig on this you could probably do it with just the mig if you can get um get access up there if you have a more flexible gun than mine but i used the I'll show you this one i used the mig i'm sorry i used the tig i used the tig torch on the top of this um bolt just on the head of the bolt i used it to clean the scale off of it because i couldn't get in there with a grinder to clean it up anyway i i worked around it with my tig torch until i had a good clean head to weld to weld it all together with um with i i tacked it with tig and then i finished welding it with mig and then i came back in with the tig again because this weld is just terrible up in there and um smoothed out some of it with the um the tig torch tried to get a better a better weld 
This one's pretty nasty looking right here. Not a professional welder. All right, well, thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful to someone. I'm sorry that I'm filming this in the middle of the night. I just needed to get it done before a job tomorrow. So I'll pop this hitch off, put the new one on. The frame looks good, so I'm not too worried about that. I am gonna go back with all new nuts and bolts. What I'm gonna do is, uh, let's see if I can find this bracket for you so you can see what I'm talking about. Here we go. Shows up nice on the grass. This is what's up inside of the C-channel frame that these screws, I'm sorry, bolts, bolt up into. And that's what keeps those those nuts from spinning. If you use an impact tool on here, there's a, a fair chance that you're going to break this little, little connector and end up spinning the heads. And then you're going to have one heck of a hard time trying to get a ratchet up there to grab this without pulling your tank loose and uh, just tearing the whole thing apart. I did take the rear bumper off, but it wouldn't have been necessary if I hadn't uh, broken one of these nuts loose um, earlier in the process. So that's what I've got. What I'm gonna go back with is the same idea. I'm just gonna use a piece of, um, for the new for the new nuts that are going on here, I'm going to use a, a piece of grade 60, which is real stiff, non-bendable rebar, and weld it to the nuts, get the spacing correct, weld it to the nuts on both sides of the nuts, and that should be enough to make a new similar bracket to this. So, sorry about rambling. Appreciate you watching. If this was helpful, please do uh, smash that like button and subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more similar videos. I do videos on home renovations. I'm a licensed contractor. I'm a shade tree mechanic, and I am, well, I'm not even a welder at all, even though I have a, a, a tool for it. So. Like and subscribe, we'd greatly appreciate it. Leave a comment below if you'd like to see us uh, work on another project, similar or dissimilar. We're happy to happy to take all kinds of recommendations and uh, would love to make a video for you. So like, subscribe, comment below. It would help us a lot and we appreciate you watching.